Hi everybody, I'm going to talk about networking, lobbying and advocacy in the field of disability. When a person has a disability, life can become very complex. Not only does the person have to deal with the impact that the disability has on his or her ability to do ordinary things in life, but also he or she has to contend with the negative attitudes of others as well as the consequences of dealing with large human service systems. The service systems and the political agenda drive the people with disability who can easily lose their way. The consequences for the persons with disability are that they live very impoverished and wasted life. Their basic needs are not met and they become open to harm or neglect. The disabled people lack basic facilities such as shelter and support and some of them live in very poor, unsafe, harmful or punitive situations. People with disability therefore can become very vulnerable especially when they have no voice and no mechanisms to influence positive change in their lives. Hence a range of techniques such as advocacy, lobbying or campaigning are used to initiate and promote positive change in the life of persons with disability. Persons with disability should live with the dignity and value on par with the non-disabled citizens. They deserve no less. The responses to vulnerable people with disability are highly inadequate and therefore strong social advocacy is needed on their behalf. At the end of this talk, you will gain an adequate knowledge about the meaning of advocacy, lobbying, campaigning and networking. Understand the relevance and importance of advocacy. Know the different aspects and types of activities related to advocacy. Understand the relevance of social work practice in the field of disabilities and learn about the role of a social worker in lobbying, advocacy and networking. Advocacy is defined as any action that is taken in favor of a cause or defense or pleads on behalf of others who are not able to act on their own. It refers to not just one action but a series of actions taken towards the change for the betterment of the disadvantaged and the vulnerable. It is a process not a one-way or one-time activity. It is clear that advocacy is an effective process aimed at achieving some specific results. It promotes equality, social justice and social inclusion. It can empower people to speak up for themselves. Advocacy can help people become more aware of their own rights to exercise those rights and be involved in and influence decisions that are being made about their future. Advocacy initiates actions which may vary according to the political, social and economic environment in which the affected people live. However, these actions have certain common factors such as questioning the way policy related to the affected people is implemented, targeting the political system that is not responding to the needs of the people, proposing alternative policy solutions and creating space for public opinions. In other words, advocacy means to give a voice to people. It is a system of actions aimed at changing attitudes, policies and practices through four key types of activity namely awareness raising, capacity development, 
networking with relevant government and non-governmental partners and lobbying key decision makers. It is about motivating and mobilizing the community. It starts with a small group of people who share concerns about a specific problem and are willing to devote time, their expertise and resources available to reach the desired change. Thus, advocacy means drawing attention to an important issue and direct decision makers to a solution, influencing the decision making at all levels, mobilizing members of the community including the wider community and developing accountability and transparency of local governments and public services or institutions. Efforts of advocacy can be directed at different audiences such as the general public, non-governmental organizations, politicians, governments, other decision makers and so on. Advocacy in the field of disability is meant to ensure that the rights of persons with a disability are upheld and their human and legal rights are promoted and protected so that they can fully participate in the community. Those who advocate on behalf of the vulnerable people with a disability can be discerning about what they promote and how they go about their program of advocacy so that vulnerability is reduced the life of the persons with a disability becomes better. It is very relevant to take on the role of representing the disabled person's interests and needs in order to influence positive and sustainable change in their lives. In the advocacy work, the attempts are made to persuade influential people involved in services, governments and community who can make a real difference. The main aim is to meet people's fundamental needs and to address and resolve the unjust and harmful experiences and practices that impact on the life of the disabled people. Let me state the types of advocacy, namely case or issue-based advocacy where effort is focused with individuals or small groups such as families in a task-centered way. For many social workers, case advocacy is more likely to be part of their day-to-day -day practice. Two, systemic or cause advocacy, where knowledge from individual cases contributes to collective advocacy for systemic change to legislation, policy, or practice. Lobbying is a practice of advocacy with the goal of influencing a governing body in order to ensure that an individual's or organization's point of view is represented in the government and that legislation is drafted and implemented accordingly. Advocacy often involves specific lobbying of decision makers. Lobbying is a complex and sensitive task that needs good preparation. It is therefore a term that includes activities of influencing the decision makers, both political and all other decisions which the community or individuals are concerned about. Lobbying is a targeted activity and is mainly consisting of a direct influence on decision making persons. In many countries, lobbying is regulated in an attempt to prevent political manipulation and corruption. People are paid to be lobbies. Campaigning is a sum of actions and activities that an organization plans or executes in order to influence policy and to raise awareness on a specific issue. The aim is not only to influence policies but also to raise public support. A successful campaign should have a simple and strong message that appeals to people's emotions. Celebrities can be very useful in conveying the message of a campaign to as wide as an audience possible. 
Typical campaigning activities include public events such as marches or vigils, the setting up of an exhibition or the distribution of pamphlets and posters. Although we need lobbying to get better governments, better services and better communities who are more responsive to the needs of people with disability, we also need something much more to redress the situations of the people themselves. We therefore believe strong social advocacy is needed to take up issues on behalf of the vulnerable people with a disability, to represent their needs and interests and to get them a better deal in life. Let me explain about the networking. Networking is defined as exchanging information for mutual benefit. As the most informal form of exchanges and types of cooperation, networking can be easily used to bring organizations or individuals together to discuss common interests. Networking often reflects a certain level of trust but also reflects the realities of the availability of limited time. It is a key building block for good cooperation but by itself networking is not collaboration. Many disabled people can feel isolated and lonely because of lack of opportunity for emotional, social and peer support. Networking helps to promote peer support and participation in heightening the community engagement of the disabled people. Social networking in the area of disability aims to help in getting connected with others, make and maintain friendships and explore the opportunities available in the local community. Networking at the community level pooling resources, avoiding the duplication of services, education and cooperation with the community leaders are crucial for a broadly based disability network to emerge. Advocacy can be divided into three types of activities, namely representation, mobilization and empowerment. Let me discuss about each of these types of activities. First representation. Representation means speaking on behalf of the community by an individual or a group to the concerned authorities or general public. It refers to well-planned advocacy which is especially important in situations where the persons with disability will not be able to speak for themselves or where one person is in charge of representing the whole group of people. The person chosen to do so must be capable of properly expressing interests of those on whose behalf he or she advocates. In this regard, it is important to ensure that the basic principles of advocacy, namely ethics and legitimacy, are satisfied. When representing some group of people, it is important that the stakeholders or the concerned persons share information with the advocates. Advocates are presenting the information received and they are contacting those persons who are in the focus of the advocacy efforts. The best persons to advocate for the rights of persons with a disability are the persons with the disability themselves. Second, mobilization. Mobilization means Nothing more than the inclusion of others in activities in a way that they are encouraged to support the struggle and then take actions towards the fulfillment of the common goal. The mobilization is actually aiming at expanding the base of support and extending from those which are directly affected by the problems to convincing others about the importance of the issue at hand. Mobilizing the support of others is important for several reasons such as the number of people who advocate is important especially if all the people are advocating for the same goal. Working with others reduces the risk that the issue they advocate for is controversial and raising public awareness 
which changes the public opinion even if the same change does not occur within the government and state system. In this process, it is expected that the community of the disabled persons will share information with those who advocate for their cause. These advocates will mobilize other individuals and organizations to join the advocacy action. The motto of the worldwide movement of people with disability, nothing about us without us, will have to be fully implemented in this process. Third, empowerment. The empowering potential of advocacy can be best be understood in terms of the relationship between case and systemic advocacy, which identifies how advocacy can contribute to changes at both individual and structural levels. However, advocacy at both levels are inevitably interrelated. Social work advocacy aims to promote change and a model for understanding advocacy that links both case and systemic advocacy demonstrates the necessity of this interrelationship since individual situations provide the information required to promote changes in systems, policy and legislation. Representation and mobilization allow people to discover how they can be active as political figures. Advocacy helps people to find simple ways that can influence the policy and practice at the same time. Also, in the process, advocates are collecting information on current positions of the government, local government and other stakeholders. This process is also very liberating because in some way it relies on personal energy and the strength of each person who is involved in the process. This particularly applies to members of groups that have traditionally been marginalized, particularly the people with the disability. This process strengthens the sense of ownership over changes achieved by encouraging individuals to participate and play an important role in the development of policy and practice. Thus, people who are encouraged experience a radical change about their place in the community and recognize that they have rights that can be proactively used. Finally, these processes encourage people to challenge the traditional roles of government and society and to convince them that they have both responsibility and rights in the society. All three activities can take place at the same time since in normal circumstances these activities are often intertwined. Advocacy is a process designed to bring about social change. The process of change can sometimes be time consuming, requires sacrifices, patience, involvement and often requires giving 100% of teamwork both within one's organization and with partner organizations, communication and openness. People who are engaged in advocacy and seeking to influence the changes in society need to accept the risk that change for which they are advocating can come much later or even that nothing has changed. Advocacy support roles include standing behind and providing support such as training, information and advice which empowers the person to self-advocate, standing beside and providing assistance by offering prompts and reminders so that the person is able to raise issues with the concerned persons and standing before and providing representation by acting or speaking on behalf of the affected person. Disability support workers or advocates are commonly expected to stand behind people with a disability to empower them, to understand their rights and responsibilities, to self-advocate, to make choices and decisions, to understand the consequences of their choices and decisions, to become self-confident 
and appropriately assertive and to help build a strong and collaborative personal support network or team. One of the most important ways disability support workers perform this empowering role is through the provision of information. The information is provided to people with a disability in ways that best assist them to understand their rights and responsibilities. Disability support workers are also often expected to stand beside people with a disability in order to effectively and appropriately assert their rights and interests, make their views, opinions and decisions known to others and resist coercion, manipulation or undue influence from others. Persons who play the role of advocate are sometimes required to stand before people with a disability to speak or act on behalf of the disabled people, defend their rights and protect their interests, care and well-being. Before undertaking the role of a representative, disability support workers need to be very mindful of certain principles. The principle of self-determination requires that all adults with a disability, namely at the age of 18 years and above, are assumed to have the capacity for making their own decisions. Where a person is capable of making his or her own decisions and asserting his or her own rights and interests, the disability workers should not seek to speak or act on their behalf without proper consent. For a person with a disability requires support to assert or represent his or her rights and interests, such support should be drawn from those people identified as members of his or her person-centered individual planning process such as family members, friends, advocates or guardians. Where a person with a disability requires someone to speak or act on his or her behalf in specific areas, such representation should be identified and agreed upon in the context of the person's plan. Where a person with a disability does not have the capacity to self-advocate, it is generally accepted that parents or family members will provide informal representation on their behalf. Where a person with a disability does not have the capacity to self-advocate and where informal advocacy support arrangements are considered inadequate to properly represent his or her rights and interests, the engagement or appointment of an independent advocate might be necessary. Advocacy consists of a series of activities undertaken with the aim of changing policies, practices and attitudes. People who are engaged in advocacy and seeking to influence the changes in society need to accept the risk that change they are advocating for can come much later or even that nothing has changed. Let me sum up. People with disability can become very vulnerable, especially when they have no voice and no mechanisms to influence positive change in their lives. Hence, a range of techniques such as advocacy, lobbying or campaigning are used to initiate and promote positive change in the life of persons with a disability. Advocacy is defined as any action that is taken in favor of your cause or defense or pleads on behalf of others who are not able to act on their own. Advocacy in the field of disability is meant to ensure that the rights of persons with a disability are upheld and their human and legal rights are promoted and protected so that they can fully participate in the community. Lobbying includes activities of influencing the decision makers both political and all other decisions about which the community or individuals are concerned. Campaigning is a sum of actions and activities that an organization plans or executes in order to influence policy 
and to raise awareness on a specific issue. The aim is not only to influence policies, but also to raise public support. Networking is defined as exchanging information for mutual benefit. As the most informal form of exchanges and types of cooperation, networking can be easily used to bring organizations or individuals together to discuss common interests. Advocacy can be divided into three types of activities, namely representation, mobilization, and empowerment. One of the most important ways disability support workers perform their empowering role is through the provision of information. The information is provided to people with disability in ways that best assist them to understand their rights and responsibilities. Before undertaking the role of a representative on behalf of the people with disability, disability support workers need to be very mindful of certain principles. Advocacy is a process designed to bring about social change. The process of change is time consuming and requires sacrifices, patience, involvement, openness, teamwork both within one's organization and with partner organization. Let me sign off now and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.